I am going to present a short demonstration of the Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse machine learning implementation. I have a table called Car Sales, which I've uh, built from a data set from Kaggle. Car Sales actually has a large number of records, so I'm just going to filter for car model A1, that is 1,347 records. This is, these are the attributes that I have. So I'm going to build a regression model to predict the price based on the four attributes, year of manufacture, mileage, engine size, and miles per gallon. So these are the four independent variables, and price is the dependent or target variable in my regression model. So this is my notebook that I built in machine learning. Uh, for this notebook, I'm actually using the free tier autonomous data warehouse. So I may not have enough resources to run everything quickly, but that's fine. So first I'm going to build a view called car sales model A for these attributes, car ID, price, year, mileage, engine size, miles per gallon. Restricting the model A1, that is 1,347 rows out of the more than 10,000 rows. Then I'm going to build a model called car sales price GLM. For those for that model, the settings I have is data preparation auto yes, algorithm generalized linear model, mining function regression. So I'm going to build regression here. The other uh, attributes or settings are currently disabled: feature selection, feature generation, and regeneration. I am not using those settings yet. My data query selects star from this view. So all these columns. My uh, case ID column is car ID. The model needs to have a unique identifier. So I built car ID as a unique identifier. Every row has a distinct car ID. My target column is price. So when I run this data query select star, it will exclude these two columns, car ID and price. The other four columns become the independent variables to determine price for every car ID. So that's how the model gets built. Once I build the model, I'm going to compare uh, the, each of the attributes that I have, the coefficient, standard coefficient, because coef the, the values of the attributes can be very different. Engine size could be zero or one, mileage could be four digits, miles per gallon could be 10 to 50 miles per gallon. So I cannot use the actual coefficient. I'll be using as a I'll be looking at the standard coefficient. Then I'm going to use the built model to predict the price against the actual price. So let me run this notebook. If you're familiar with Jupyter notebooks for Python, you this is similar, except that this is a notebook that Oracle has implemented here, which supports SQL. <clears throat> so SQL queries, SQL PLSQL scripts, so, for example, percentage SQL means I'm running SQL script, uh, SQL query. Percentage script meaning I'm running a DML or a DDL statement or a PL SQL package. Oracle or, uh, machine learning also supports Python. So, if you have enough resources in your autonomous data warehouse, you could also run Python code with percentage Python. So, right now, this uh, model uh, A view has been built to filter only for model number. Model number A1, which we know is 1,347 rows. And now the generalized linear model using regression function based on all the determining attributes, year, mileage, engine size, miles per gallon, for a target column price is being built. Sometimes it takes a minute only, sometimes it can take four to five minutes. So because I'm using free tier, I do not have enough resources to run it very quickly. And thankfully, I've only restricted myself to 1,347 rows for this demonstration. <clears throat> These are the results from a previous run. I can just show you. For example, from a previous run, my actual price for car ID one, with these values for year, mileage, and size, miles per gallon, actual price 2,500, predicted price 15,809, difference, of 26% and so on. So I could go through all the 1,347 rows in a previous run <coughs> and compute the difference between the actual price and the predicted price. Now remember, I'm using these four columns as the independent variables to determine price as the uh, target. So 
So when you're building your model, you might identify that one of the column is not a very good determinant. You might, data, you might drop that column from your model or from the underlying view that you use and rerun your model, rebuild your model, rerun the model again. You can also have Oracle do automatic feature selection and feature generation for you. So there's a lot of built-in features in DBMS data mining. This is autonomous data warehouse, so I'm using the 21C version. So you can see there's a lot of things you can use in data mining. Uh, let me just show you. Model settings. <coughs> so for example, I'm using the generalized linear model. So these are all the settings I can configure. For the present, I've just disabled feature generation and feature selection. But there's uh, things that I can set. And there are some global settings also that I can configure for the model. Why am I looking at coefficient and standard coefficient is because they are, the scale would be different. So I'm going to use the standardized coefficient. You can look up the Wikipedia page uh, to uh, compare which attribute is, is a better determinant of the price. So this model build has been taking more than four minutes. There are runs which has less than two minutes, even one minute, there are runs which four to five minutes. So it's really depending depends on the resources you have at that time. This doesn't look good for Oracle, for its autonomous data warehouse service, but maybe because I'm using the free tier, it's taking longer to run my, uh, my instance is not getting enough resources. When you're, when you're running a, a notebook in machine learning, there are things you can select here for Interpreter binding, you can select high priority, low priority, and so on for your connection, for your SQL connection. But obviously, since I'm limited to one CPU, I don't have any parallelism, I can't use multiple CPUs. So there's not much of uh, interpreter binding you can do. These notebooks that Oracle has built support Python as well. So instead of percentage script and percentage SQL, you can use percentage Python and invoke Python code. Again, in my free tier, I have not been able to get Python code to run. It just runs out of resources. So I'm just using simple SQL and TLSPL for the DMS data mining package. This run is really taking a long time. Let me go back to a previous run where I had run. So I'm just showing you this again. I used prediction on the model. Remember the model I built is car phase plus GLM for a generalized linear regression. And so the model name, so prediction using this model and using all the attributes. So I'm good there. So that's how I predict, compute a predicted price because price is the target. So the value returned by this is a predicted price because price is the target for that model. Six minutes and counting. I've already run in less than two minutes. And I've run this repeatedly. There have been runs of two minutes, there have been runs of five minutes. This seems to be the longest run so far, unfortunately. <clears throat> so you can look up the DBMS data mining documentation. <coughs> so you can look at what are the features available in the data mining package. Let's look at this here. What are the algorithms? I'm using OML for SQL because I'm invoking machine learning through SQL. So what are the algorithms? I'm using generalized linear model and using a regression, running regression through that model. There's, there's a number of other models you can use for classification, for feature extraction, clustering, and so on. Back here. Really bad. Trust me, it has taken less than two minutes in a number of runs. Seven minutes is too long. I don't want to stop and start the build again. Maybe I'm just running this in an unfortunate time and I'm not getting enough resources on the cloud for, for my database.
the uh, once you build the model it builds a view called dm dollar vd and the model in process by clm there are a number of other uh, columns available so p value is what i'm not going to select here i'm not interested in p value i'm just interested in the coefficient standard coefficient and standard error so that's what i'm going to extract from this view and then of course i'm going to use the model to predict the price Okay, so the model build took 10 minutes 51 seconds, and now this query has also run. So you can see the coefficient, the intercept, because where attribute name is null, it's an intercept. So that's the intercept. And uh, as I told you, the because the engine size, mileage, and miles per gallon have can be very different values. The, don't look at the coefficients, just look at the standard coefficients. So that's why I just want to show you here. Mileage, years, miles per gallon, so many different values. So instead of looking at coefficient as a determinant, I'm looking at standard coefficient. So mileage negative, meaning the higher the mileage, the lower the price. The longer the car is run, the lower the price. Miles per gallon negative, the better the efficiency, the lower price. Here, positive, the newer the car, the higher the price. You can see here, year is a better determinant than engine size. So maybe later I could rebuild this model and exclude engine size from my model, either in, in the data query or in the source view itself. I could rerun the model by excluding engine size because I think engine size is not enough of a determinant. And then, of course, that means the coefficients of the other determinants will change. So that's how, how, how I interpret this. Now I'm running this query. When you run a query in, in the notebook, it's limited to a thousand rows. I am taking a sample of only 10% because I'm going to show the results as a bar chart. So when I run this query, I'll just show you if I run it again. You can see the results as a bar chart. Now why I show it as a bar chart is very interesting. Okay. So my key is car ID. Right, so I can plot actual price. For every car, what is the actual price? I can plot predicted price. So I can look at the actual price versus predicted price. I can look at percentage difference between the actual price and predicted price. So here also you can see that I computed the, predict, uh, the absolute of the difference. Remember, I don't care whether it's a positive difference or a negative difference. I just take the absolute of the difference as the percentage difference between the actual price and the predicted price. So the beauty of this machine learning and notebooks is you can actually plot these charts. Uh, for this data set, a bar chart makes more sense rather than a pie chart or a linear chart or line chart. But depending on what well, what data you have, you could use different types of charts. So let me just go back and bring in actual price or predicted price again and use the difference percentage. So here we have actual price versus predicted price for every car ID. Remember, chi ID is a unique uh, value for so, and the underlying table has 10,000 rows. So not I, so I don't have consecutive values for model A. I'll show that in SQL developer. So here is where I run this query again. So car ID one is model A. Yes, uh, that's the actual price. That's the predicted price. The difference percentage. Car ID three, 24 percent difference. Car ID six, five percent difference. I can run the query for all the columns from the underlying table or the underlying view itself. And I can see what they are. I can I can do an auto buy. Remember I told you in uh, this, if you run a query in uh, the notebook in machine learning, it, my experience shows it's limited to 1,000 rows. So if you want to see more rows, you can do it in SQL developer. Then of course I can look at what is the mean difference, max difference, and average difference? So for 1,347 rows, mean difference is, is some, there are some rows with very low difference, some with a very high difference. So that means <coughs> I might want to rebuild the model. Maybe I want to rebuild the model later and take out engine size. Maybe engine size is not a very good determinant. So I could, I might take out engine size, rebuild my view, or rebuild them, uh, take it out from the model itself. And so that's how I might fine-tune my model 
to predict price based on the other attributes to see how close predict price is to actual price and once i have a good model good enough model i can then use it for data that is out of the sample i get a new incoming data set a new row which is not in my data set but for which i have year mileage engine size and miles per gallon and actual price i put in those values and this model will give me a predicted price that's how i use i can use this model in the future so i'll be able to use this predict this uh, function prediction based on the model to predict a price so this is a very good feature in automotive data warehouse machine learning is in simple sql and the built in dvms data mining package